Thank you, thank you very much for having me. Um, I have a short time because we have to catch a plane. So uh, I'll try to shortly explain to you what following me is important for urbanization in the future. I've put it out in six uh, advices. Of course, there are many advices about which we could talk a long time. Not that I want to sound too dogmatic, but just to explain it in a short period, I'll uh, try to limit it to those six advices. First advice, embrace climate change as an opportunity. A lot of people think climate change is a danger, but it means that we have to transform all our public spaces and all our streets and plazas. Um, this also can be a chance. For instance, uh, in this project in Leuven, which is a city in Flanders, um, the, the, the passing traffic was transformed on a road near the, near the railway, and so the, the street could be a local street, and this really changed the environment. You see above the picture how it was. It was only a street where you could pass, and now the place becomes a living environment. And all the people that live there along the road can use the space, the outside space, as a part of their living area. And I think this is a big chance we have by alternating the public space and make it more climate adaptive. Second rule, embrace the aesthetics of circularity and reuse. When you have an old monument, like here in Antwerp, we have this old castle or a part of a castle, and the castle was renewed. There came an addition to the building, and it was remade as a whole. And in the architecture, they used the existing medieval castle as an inspiration. And in all details, they kind of invented a new kind of architecture that's sort of medieval slash, uh, slash today architecture. And I think it's very important that when you start from an existing ruin or building, you can make a new identity for the building and you can invent like a new sort of architecture. In this other example, uh, you, it's in Zinneke by Oest in Brussels. You see this new facade is totally made by existing windows. They, they got from demolition elsewhere. So they made a new sort of combination with those existing limbit, uh, windows. And this makes that there's a new kind of aesthetics that is going to, to overcome us all. Because when we try to make new things out of reused material, we have to question what aesthetics are about. And I think that gives us a chance to make new identities and new buildings with a certain aesthetics that we do not know yet. And I think that's a big opportunity for the future. Third important rule, approach local residents as experts. As we live in a democratic world, when you change or when you build a public building or you change something in a public space, uh, all people want their say in it. It's different from 200 years ago. Now, you can't build an important public building without listening to the people and the neighborhood that lives there. But what's important about it, I don't believe uh, a lot in letting them help in making the building. So I don't believe in co-creation. I think the, the making of the building, the designing of the building, it's a profession. 
and we should pro protect that profession. So I think it's better to involve the knowledge of the people in the beginning of the process by making the assignment, by asking the question. Because it's very important when you want a good design, you need a good question. If you have a sharp question, the chances are better that you will get a sharp design. So it's better to involve the neighbors by asking the question than debating about the results. Fourth, approach infrastructure as architecture. I don't have to explain much about it, only to say that this is a water tower somewhere in Flanders. And I think it's very important that you don't only have your design equipment and you don't uh, choose for good and great designers when it's an important building like a museum or a library, but also use architecture for all this banal and, and normal infrastructural uh, things. This is, for instance, a new uh, bike bridge. Oh, all, also, that can be architectural important improvement. Five, and I think we, we talked uh, about it this, this morning already, uh, focus on appro appropriation and on collective space. What is very important, I think, maybe in the whole of Europe, especially in Flanders, there's really a lack of, complete, of co collective space. What the speakers before me uh, addressed to as semi-public space. That's the space where you meet the people you know, your close neighbors, your family, the spaces that exist in small villages but don't exist in big cities. And it's very important to initiate those spaces when you make housing. For instance, these two, self, two types of European housing, the one on the left is in Hamburg, it's around the 19th century. And the one on the right could be anywhere in Europe, I think it's somewhere in a Dutch uh, city. It's the same amount of housing. It's the same density, only in the first case, you have a collective space. When you come out of your front door, you meet the other people and you know who is living beside you. In the other example, there's no collective space, there's no collective living at all. And I think it's an, a task of the architect to focus on society when you build these types of housing. This is an example of housing we did. Uh, it's in a small town in Hill. Um, and you see that this architecture like of puzzles inside the texture of the village. And you see that all the houses have a connection by their front door. And evil, even the people that live on the first floor, they are connected with the people below. Everybody, when you go out your front door, you see somebody else. And I think these types of small communities is very important to shape when you think about new housing. The last of it, install Baukultur. I think it's very important, and I try to explain how we did that in Flanders. For... Um, 20 years, a little more than 20 years now, there exists a government architect, a Baumeister. There's a team of 15 people who help him, and the team always stays the same, and every five years, there's a new Baumeister. One of the things they develop, developed in these 20 years is an open call. And every half year, we, we assemble all the projects in Flanders that are interested in the open call, and we address them to all architects in Flanders. And then, in these 20 years, we already built like 300 new um, public buildings or public spaces. 
And this creates a kind of culture that everybody starts to realize that by building uh, some public building, you can change something in a society. It means it can add identity, but it also can add the way that people live together. It can make people of a little town proud to have a new library and connect people with each other. I think this installation of a Baukultur from the, from the government is very important for a nation. These are some examples of the open call we did, like, like this renovation of an old uh, water mill, or this public space in Antwerp, uh, where the whole place is covered. It's a very interesting for skaters and for the marketplace today. Or this very high-level building in Antwerp by Xavier de Geiter Architects, which is uh, an office uh, building. Also important in this Baukultur is that you come out uh, to a general discussion and a general opinion and sensibilization about Baukultur and about architecture. Uh, I wrote this note when I started, and it's called Creating Opportunities for Encounter. And to finish, I'll try, ex try to explain what my point is about that. We live in a very special times because today we can meet each other not in a physical place. We can also meet online. And therefore, we can have a private conversation in the middle of a public place, but also we can have public conversation in the privacy of our room. And this has never happened to humanity before. And I think, therefore, there's a very important task for all architects and designers that is focused on this encounter. Every building can be an opportunity for people to encounter each other. It can be an opportunity to make society better. And that's why there's a big task for all of you architects by rebuilding the city focus on how the building is connected with the public space and creates this encounter. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Viers. It's indeed a very inspiring and interesting uh, examples that you show from Flanders. And uh, we will have also the, uh, the architects tomorrow speaking from Flanders. Uh, David van Severen is uh, uh, representing Kirsten uh, Gears and David van Severen a studio. He will ha have a talk tomorrow. And uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, if it's still possible, because you're uh, late for, uh, could be late for the plane, but maybe one or two small questions from the auditoria. This. Uh, thank you very much for the speech. Um, how would you define uh, Bau Kultur uh, so that uh, people outside sort of the urbanist slash architecture community would uh, be interested in that? So uh, to spread the uh, word into masses. Um, <clears throat> I think the idea of Bau Kultur is that it differs from architectural quality because it points to all the qualities that the building could have besides the building, the building itself. The building itself can be beautiful or it can be sustainable or it can be practical. But Baukultu means that by adding a building, you add some other social values because the building can be something people can uh, proud of. It can be an identity. It can be a place where people meet. It can add something to society. And that's why, why, why making buildings can become Baukultur when you see architecture as a larger social phenomenon. I hope that. Thank you for, the, for your answer.
Okay, maybe one more question. Please. Hello, thank you for sharing this inspiring material with us. And I wanted to ask you, you said a lot about the lack of communal spaces in the Flanders architecture and city villages infrastructure. So which typologies are the most frequently requested and the most important, I think for us, it will be a new practice. So how is it being collected from the community? Is it form of workshops? How do you interact and how do you commonly arrive to decision of which typologies to create? Uh, I think the collectiveness can be in the participation of the people to approach it. But the thing I'm speaking of is when you make a living area and other people talked about it before me, the most dense uh, place, the most dense city you could make is make seven layers and making building blocks. It's not the, higher tow the highest tower that gives the most of density. And the problem with a high tower is that there's no connection between the people that live there. And there's also no connection between the people and the ground floor. And I think the livability of a city is related to the fact that there's a connection with the ground floor and the public domain. So you can shop, you can have activities where people can do things and also that you know your neighbors. I lived in an apartment block once, and there's some people I lived there for three, four years, I never saw, because I only met them when I took the elevator. But when you would have a common terrace on the roof of the apartment block, then suddenly you would meet everybody. And by meeting other people, you would be able to help other people and to arrange things together. And that can really build a better society. So I think it's important that you don't only look at how many apartments can we build on this land, but that you look at how can people live in groups and encounter each other and have a common place where they, which they can share together, where they can eat outside together or have a garden together or whatever. I think it's really important when renewing the city that you look at that. I hope it answers your question. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming here in person. Have a nice way home. <laughs>